Last year we had a we had a talk from uh, our next speaker, Jerome Jerome Bomban, uh, who's now director of Stock Verification at Samsung. Last year, Jerome gave us a talk on his verification challenges at TI, and this year he's given us a talk on uh, a different set of verification challenges at uh, Samsung. And I, I guess in between is the set of personal challenges as well as he goes from TI to Samsung. Um, last year, Jerome gave a remote presentation from Sophia to Grenoble, so it's nice to see Jerome in person today. So I'm going to hand over to now Jerome to tell us his top three verification challenges at Samsung. The main challenge at the moment is to get the mic on his bar. <laughs> okay? Okay, good morning everyone. Okay, so Mark uh, given the perfect introduction for uh, this presentation. Uh, so basically, uh, us, all of you guys are pretty much familiar with the, the context of things we are doing. So this is uh, a very simplified block diagram of uh, a Samsung Exynos product, but this is fairly uh, similar to any of the, the products um, for mobile application uh, nowadays. So, of course, as you can see, there's a bunch of, uh, of IPs and interfaces uh, that need to be uh, verified. And so that will be the main uh, topic of my presentation. So, uh, as an introduction, uh, so the presentation will be about how to go from IP uh, to soft level through subsystem uh, in a quickly, safely, and predictable way. Um, so, Mark, uh, uh, has covered part of the introduction uh, already uh, with some facts. Uh, I mean, very significant part of the, uh, the modern ASICs is uh, from reusable IPs. We talked about uh, the verification resources, uh, so it can take hard for 30 percent, depending on whether you include backend, frontend, depending on on the organizations, but uh, we all agree that it's a very significant part of the overall uh, verification resources. Um, we found in various companies that actually most of the functional bugs found on the silicon would have been caused through proper partitioning of the verification at the IP, the subsystem, and the SOC level. And that will be an important aspect of this uh, presentation. And the last um, thing that we've seen uh, in, in Samsung and previously in, in TI was the fact that uh, when it comes to uh, IP deliveries, um, so multimedia IPs, interface IPs, uh, from vendors, uh, usually the, these deliveries are mostly uh, design focused or uh, backend or timing closure focused but very few of these deliveries are verification-centric. And this makes uh, a very significant difference in terms of integrating uh, these IPs at the various levels. So uh, my three challenges IP vendors uh, this year uh, will have to do with uh, including these missing deliveries in their IP package. Um, and so three main deliveries categories I see are sign-off integration verification plan, verification software libraries, and integration uh, coverage toolboxes. So for the first category, uh, basically by sign-off integration uh, verification, uh, we mean the ideal situation would be basically that any IP is delivered along with a sign-off list of features that need to be verified at the SOC level and only at the SOC level in order to verify the complete integration of the IP. And it has to be necessary and sufficient. That is, uh, of course, uh, we, we need to ensure uh, that all of the interfaces, all the interoperability of the IP is correctly verified at the SOC level but we don't need to verify uh, the internals of the IP and the internal behavior of, uh, of the IP itself is 
redundant and not necessary uh, at the uh, at the soft level. So basically, the idea is to focus um, the soft verification on the integration, the interfaces, and the operability of the bus and any uh, any interaction that the this given IP has with the rest of the chip. So of course. Uh, uh, an aspect of it is that it leaves uh, the responsibility of the IP-specific functionality up to the uh, IP providers. That is, the IP provider has to take the full responsibility of, uh, of the IP or quality. Of course, another benefit is that it saves uh, quite some time and resources because, again, the SOC-level verification engineer can focus really on, on his responsibility, and that is to guarantee a complete uh, integration of all of the IPs uh, at, at the software. And so our recommendation would be, of course, to include, I mean, the usual suspects, you name it, clock, reset, bus interfaces, and any specific uh, functional interface that the given IP has. And it has to cover all the functional, the performance, the power uh, management, and the security uh, requirements as well. Okay, so this is a first category of deliveries that we would like to see delivered as part of the uh, IP uh, bundles or packages uh, from the IP vendors. Uh, another category of delivery, uh, software libraries. So by software, we don't mean necessarily C or assembly level, but some kind of executable format uh, covering at least, you know, an exhaustive description of uh, IP register. I know that, I mean, some vendors do provide this, uh, this kind of, of information, but not all, and it's not standardized uh, in any case. Uh, more importantly, programming sequences. So it's not sufficient to deliver uh, an executable description of all the registers into any IP but it's also very important to provide um, reference programming sequences that we can use at the soft level to guarantee that the IP is correctly uh, integrated. And it has to cover the minimal sequences to exercise ne not necessarily all of the IP functionality, that is, the, the, the verification software set can be fairly compact, uh, and so this guarantees that it will be usable in a simulation context where the runtime, of course, is, uh, is essential. Um, and again, it has to focus really on uh, the IP integration and the interaction with the rest of the chip. So again, uh, more or less the same usual suspect functionality. Performance is crucial from this perspective. So if this programming sequence can directly focus on the most critical scenarios that the IP uh, can, can trigger uh, is, of course, uh, very important. Power management, security, and again, any IP-specific um, aspect. Um, the last category uh, we would see um, is integration uh, coverage two boxes. So by two boxes, um, we, uh, we mean basically IP plus verification IP bundles, that is, uh, in our opinion, uh, basically any IP should be delivered as a bundle with verification IPs, and these verification IPs should, of course, match the intention to, to integrate this IP at the top level. So, of course, I mean, uh, a side effect is that it provides a ready-to-integrate package, which is, I mean, of course, very important for the vendor. To, uh, to sell his IP uh, to as many uh, users as possible. It removes, from the user perspective, the assault to have to find, to buy and match the IP with the verification IP with all of the possible versions uh, that can exist on the, on, on the market. And also, it, uh, it's very important to, uh, to realize that in this context, the VIPs don't have to be Exhaustive, so they don't have to be as complex as would a VIP uh, be for IP level verification. Where of course the VIP 
has to provide all of the functionalities of, uh, uh, of the IP it's meant to verify. In this context, it, again, it has only to cover all of the integration uh, verification objective. So basically, the vendor could deliver a simplified IP that is tailored to verify only the, the integration of the IP uh, at the soft level. Uh, this toolbox set would, of course, include scoreboards to, uh, uh, to guarantee that the soft level uh, engineer can basically predict his coverage and so uh, that the, uh, basically, verification at teams at the soft level don't have to, you know, to redo the, all of the coding of the, the scoreboards, the callbacks and everything. Same goes with assertions. Uh, they, they, Ideally, they would have to be delivered along and so bundled with the, uh, the IPs. Of course, written in the main industry standard language. We've seen that in Mark's presentation. And covering, again, clock gating, reset checks, performance, power management, security. Um, the last category uh, we would see, but there are probably many others, uh, would uh, be the ability uh, to provide a complete sign-off um, IT integration coverage report. That is, uh, any mean to be able uh, to uh, document the coverage obtained at the soft level for this particular IP. So, uh, in our opinion, it's really uh, up to the uh, IP vendors uh, to provide the means to guarantee that these particular IPs, and of course leveraging all of the experience he has gathered in, uh, in developing the IP and productizing the IP, uh, it's really up to the vendors uh, to, uh, to provide these materials um, and, um, and so help a lot with the integration of, uh, of these IPs. Thank you. That slide. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'll be very quick. So basically, that's really the, the, the conclusion. So very clearly, we would see that uh, providing such, you know, verification-ready IP bundles would have much favorable impact on, uh, on stock integration and time to market. It avoids, you know, the dilemma uh, between SOC, IP, and subsystem level. So each level can stick, you know, to well identify and bound objectives, and it addresses the, you know, don't know where to stop. Uh, syndrome. And of course, it requires gener generalization, standardization, and collaboration and alignment between IP vendors, uh, VIP providers, and EDA tool vendors. And, and, and. Yeah, I, I have one quick question. Because you asked for VIP and IP to be bundled together, yes. and, I, and I know a lot of companies insist that VIP comes from a different vendor to the IP, some companies. Yeah. But, so that does require quite a lot of collaboration for those companies to... Could be. Yeah. But in many cases, actually, the same vendor can provide the IP, and by construction, if the vendor has been able to develop his IP, he has been using some kind of verification IP by construction, so he should be able to deliver that. I, I guess my point was some people insist that they're different, so the same, so the IP then that doesn't make the same assumptions in the VIP as well, to have some level of independence and in verification of the, of the VIP. Correct. Yes. But the kind of VIP we, we talked about here yeah. is really more integration. For integration. Yeah. And so it, like, the it can be a simplified version. I, yeah, I agree. I understand. We have one question from the audience. Can you just say your name before you start, because of the people on the webinar? Hi. This is Jose Mongian from ST. Um, yeah, you're talking about uh, having some lightweight VIPs for sub level integration. I'm curious if you apply the same techniques for the IPs you develop internally as well, where you have, uh, you know, very complex and uh, all featured VIPs at IP level, and you have very lightweight uh, VIPs at uh, yeah, sub level. That's a very good question, and actually all of this, or most of this presentation, actually applies to internal development as well, yeah. where, of, of course, any team you know, within a company can be considered as an IP provider or IP vendor. And so, of course, the same deliveries should apply. And we had experiences in the past uh, at TI and now in, in Samsung of IP teams delivering such you know, simplified uh, VIPs or 
integration through boxes, you know, covered groups, uh, assertions, uh, this kind of thing, and even programming sequences. Uh, actually, in, in TI, we, we work a lot with register description and programming sequences to be able to exercise the IDs at the top level. So, yeah, that's a very important aspect. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thanks. One more question. Hi, JL Gray from uh, Cadence. Uh, so you mentioned, uh, again, you're talking about this, the specific kind of deliverables that for VIP that are related to SOC verification. Correct. Now, some I, people buying IP, they want to see uh, complete test plans and coverage and all of this from the IP vendor. Do you think that's important, or do you really think it's more important to see this, or are they two separate things, really? Well, I, I think, of course, I mean, it's important that the IP vendor provides uh, a detailed description of what he has been doing to verify his IP, of course, and to guarantee that the quality level of the IP, uh, of the IP is, is good. But this is not the, the, the context of this presentation. Here, it's really provide any sign of metrics or materials to guarantee that the IP is correctly integrated. So it's not, strictly speaking, the IP quality itself. It's really documenting the fact that the integration team and the, ver the soft level verification team has done a good job in you know, integrating the IPs and make sure that all of the interaction between this IP and the rest of the world is documented Correct, uh, covered, uh, and uh, in you know, and some kind of automated way. So you want something that's you want the information to judge the quality, but for actual use in your verification environment, you want something that's very focused on the SOC integration. Yeah. Part. Yeah. Basically, a bunch of assertions that I can run at the top level, and that guarantees that all of my test cases have exercised all of the key features of the IP, and it's a sign-off list. So the vendor guarantees that if all of these assertions are fired, then uh, the IP is correctly integrated and nothing, no side effect can, can occur. So, uh, of course, this is an, an ideal situation, but at least we, we, knew, we need to do some, yeah, some, some progress in, in this direction. All right. Thank you very much, Jim.